Made in the USA, not something you are likely to see on the tags of your clothes right now. But a group of Atlanta engineers bets that it can bring the textile industry back to the South. Not with a return to the past, but a look to the future. Made in the USA. Textile mills used to be as common in the South as cotton fields. But the U.S. garment industry is now just a dusty memory. Today, one look inside your closet tells the story. Made in China, India, Bangladesh. More than 90% of the clothes you're buying aren't made here. Every revolution, there's a pulse. But Atlanta engineer Steve Dickerson says he can change that. It's about 100% probability that it will work. It is a sewing robot. Dickerson came up with the idea when Georgia Tech asked him to give a speech on the future of robotics. Now his team is showing off its prototype to an international audience at the Tech Textile Trade Fair held this year in Atlanta. The robot impresses the tech-savvy crowd. But can it cut it in a real manufacturing plant? We are in Selma, Alabama at American Apparel Factory. This is one of the few places where you can still find clothing made in the USA. And it goes back to a law, 1941, that requires military uniforms to be made in this country. Dickerson's group wants to eventually test its robot in this plant. Roy Ezel runs the place. He's been in the textile business since the 1970s, when most of our clothes were made in America. As for Sobots, Roy is all for them. I would welcome it with open arms. People have tried this before, though. There's been some success, but just to a point. And other attempts at robotics have given birth to some of the machinery you have. Absolutely. Roy showed me example after example of spinoffs from past attempts to automate the entire sewing process. That's the way we have been able to keep what is still left of apparel manufacturing in the United States today. Here's the best example of why complete automation has failed so far. See how this worker has to move the fabric around? Well, our bodies have curves, so the fabric has curves. That's a challenge even for people with years of experience. Like Ruthie Davis. She knows the drill now. The more Ruthie sews, the more she gets paid. And she almost always doubles her base salary. If you don't do nothing, you don't get paid nothing. So I, I work. The Atlanta engineers are convinced their computers can replicate Ruthie's work. Technology has advanced. Prices have not. The cost of computing has just gone through the floor. If this project works, there won't be a need for as many commercial seamstresses. But Steve Dickerson says there would be higher paying jobs, maintenance, installation, logistics, computer programming, and on. The jobs in manufacturing of garments in the United States is about 150,000 people. After we got the importation part of it back to the United States, we would be at at least half a million. Dickerson says his soap bots about a year and a half away from being ready for market. The first customer would be the U.S. military. In fact, the Pentagon's already put a million dollars into this project. Step two would be going into commercial business and trying to get back some of the manufacturing that we have lost since the mid-1990s. This would be so important if it happened.